it's Kaylee here for Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me for this soap making video. Today I am going to take you along as I successfully make the soap that I was trying to make in my last video and that is a cucumber and sea salt spa bar. I have learned from my silly little errors and um, the things I wasn't quite thinking about when I made that particular soap and I now have a bar of soap which I am happy to put out as part of the luxury range. Before we go and have a look at how I make it and also learn about something else that I learned about while making this um, this particular bar of soap, I wanted to give you a bit of a background as to why I really wanted to create this soap as a part of the range. In early December, Hubby and I went for a little getaway out to a place called Stanthorpe, which is in Outback Queensland. I say Outback Queensland, it's about two and a half, three hours drive away from here. It's um, remote enough that um, the amenities or the big cities are not close by, um, but they still have a lot of um, tourist destination things there. And one of the places we went to was a place called Washpool Soap, and Melissa was kind enough to take me not only through all the shop area, but she also took me through all of her making area, storage area, and everything else. And then once we'd gone through that, I was able to go through the shop and I had an absolute field day picking out all the different things that I actually wanted to buy and try and I ended up picking up quite a number of different soaps and mainly because I liked the smell, I liked the look, I liked um, the colours and things like that and when I was looking at them once we got back to our hotel room I realised that I'd actually picked up three different salt bars and I love a good salt bar and I gave one to hubby and I kept two for myself and it got me thinking about adding in a salt bar into my range and then it kind of flowed on to thinking I actually have a cucumber and sea salt cleansing body scrub in my range which is one of my favorite scrubs to use and thought that it would be good to actually create a soap based off of that cleansing body scrub. So let's go and see how I successfully make this soap. Let's go. All right, so we are all set up for attempt number two at this soap. And in my bucket here, I do have my oil mix. Now this is different to my usual oil mix that I use. I have added in a bit of extra oil from that last soap so we can make sure that we are filling this mold up. This particular oil mix is a lot higher in um, coconut oil. And that is because salt is notorious for killing bubbles in anything. And because we as a society have been conditioned by big companies that we need bubbles to clean which is a complete fallacy um, we need to create bubbles in this mix as well otherwise people just get very very disappointed so for this one I am using a lot higher um, coconut oil to compensate the cleansingness of coconut oil I have increased my super fat on that on this so that means I'm actually using a little bit less lye water than what I normally would so that not all of this oil is going to turn into salt or into soap and that will then mean that some of those oils will remain to help Stop that dryingness that the high coconut will um, will add to this soap. The other things I have got to go into this soap in this little pot I have a very creamy looking concoction which is my fresh cucumber which I have blitzed up with a little bit of still distilled water and my goat's milk powder because I find it easier to incorporate into the soap if it is in this sort of liquidy um, state and I also have some kale and clay to go into this one too. So we're going to start as we always do by mixing these oils with the sodium hydroxide distilled water solution and then I'm going to split it up for a little bit of color before I do split it up for the color I am going to add in my kale and clay and I'm also going to add in the cucumber and goat's milk solution as well It has developed that lovely goat's milk 
um, smell to it. I will finish mixing that powder through as we mix in these colorants. I just don't want it to get too super thick on me just yet. What I have got in this jug here, I have got some titanium dioxide and I'm just gonna split off a good portion of that one now. Pick up all my little drips. We'll get that titanium dioxide mixed in so that we don't get any colors because I then need my stick blender again. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do into this container here, I have some chartreuse mica. That was my gloves on the um, on the bucket. I'm going to split out, yeah, about that much. And into my big container here, I am going to put in, this is a little bit of sea mist mica from my mica obsession. So we're going to have the two greens and that little bit of white. In fact, that's heaps of mica, so let's get those colours mixed in. What I'm now going to do is add in my fragrance oil into all of these. We only need a bit in that one, get some in there, rest in there. We'll get that mixed in. And then between these two bigger containers, I am going to separate my salt out. Now this time round, what I've got, I've got some pink Himalayan salt in here, which is that sort of finer grain that I spoke about in um, my vlog video that I did. And I'm, I'm not yet decided if I'm going to show the, um, the other video, but if I do, I'll probably talk about it in there too. I didn't have quite enough of the Himalayan sea salt, so I actually took the um, same sea salt that I used in the kind of faux pas soap and I blitzed it through the, um, through the Nutri Ninja so that it was a nice fine grade salt so it should be nice and exfoliating. I'm still really concerned about the other salt that I, the other bar that I did, whether it's going to be too rough on the skin. Now some people really do like a rough exfoliating um, soap bar so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I'll just have to wait and see um, what it's like when it actually cures and about whether or not people will actually still want it. Um, if not, hubby's already, he likes an exfoliating bar of soap, so he's already um, earmarked a couple for himself. <laughs> so um, he's either going to have a lot of soap to use or he might be able to use it for others as well. But I think this one is actually looking much nicer having the finer grade salt in here and also that nice mix of pink Himalayan and the sea salt. So there's a good reason why I've not put salt into the into the white one. Now on that last bar that, or the last soap that I made, I put the white across the top and I really didn't like how it came out. So this time I'm going to do a drop swirl with it. But the reason I've not put the salt in there is because as I said before, salt will kill the lather of the soap. I think if we've got that unsalted soap mixed in with the salted soap will get a beautiful bubbly lather when actually using it. So that is my sort of theory behind it, whether it's going to work or not. Well, that's a whole other story. But when I did do a little bit of a test with the failed, well, I'm calling it a failed batch. When I did a test with it, it was super bubbly and that was the bit that I had with the white on the top of it. So that is what I am hoping to achieve. So again, I have got my big slab mold here from Dean over at Swirls Soap. What we actually might do is a in the pot with the two greens here. Ooh, looking nice. All right, so we've got that going in there. Let's get this poured into the slab mold. Ooh, I love those colors together. <gasps> That's looking better for filling it up once we get it all scraped out. 
in fact I won't quite scrape all of that bucket out yet because we'll save a bit for the top. What I'm going to do is grab this white, give it a stir, it is starting to set up because of the cucumber and the goat's milk and everything else but that should give us some really interesting drops in here so we might also get a chopstick through it as well. We'll just, I'll see, see what happens after I pour it, see where the, the fancy takes me. Yep, the fancy's taking me into chopstick land, so let's give that a swirl like so, get right into those corners. And then it's time for me to get these scraped out, and this size soap is looking much better than my last attempt, so I must have the right amount of oils this time. So that is all I am actually going to do with this soap. I'm just going to leave it like that. Now I'm not going to make the same mistake as last time. It is about two o'clock in the afternoon now. I am going to leave this. It will probably take about four to six hours. So I will be back later on tonight and we will actually cut this the same day it's made. And hopefully I don't have any issues with my wire cutter this time. So we'll be back in just a moment to unmold it and cut it open. All right, it has been about three hours since I made this soap and I'm gonna see if we can cut it now so that I don't miss that cutting point. So I'm just gonna undo the Velcro sides of this mold so I can then split it open and get this out of here easily. It is still warm underneath, but it is definitely a solid bar of soap. Now I have got my gloves on to do this because this, as I said, it's only about three hours old. So it does mean that this has not fully saponified yet. So I need to make sure I've got my gloves on um, against that soap there. What I am going to do, because I'm going to do this on the log splitter and I want a piece of paper to roll this through, I'm actually just going to grab my scissors and cut myself a strip off. Look at that colour, it is looking absolutely gorgeous and it smells so good. I'm really sad that is all of my fragrance oil that I have got left of this aloe vera and cucumber. It is the nature's um, garden one which unfortunately they now do not ship overseas. I went to see if I could get some more from the place that I actually ordered that one from and it's all out of stock and I don't know if she's going to get any more in so I'm going to have to be fairly frugal with what's left and then try and find a suitable alternative. But what I'm going to do is go and get my um, log splitter and we're going to separate that into logs and then hopefully we can cut this on the multi bar as well. Actually, no we're not. Can you see that mark? <laughs> I've just gone to pick this up to go and take photos and stuff first and luckily and I've just put my finger into that bit that is the only soft bit of this soap the rest of it is hard and what I'm thinking is that is the white bit that didn't have any salt in it so it just needs that extra little bit of time so I'm going to leave this one sit here for about an hour I'm going to go and feed the dog and then I will come back and we will get it cut All 
right, so I'm kind of a little bit stuck between a rock and a hard place here. This is actually firming up nicely. I should be able to get this through the single bar cutter. But you can see some of this white here is still really soft and it seems to be where there's big patches of that white. And um, where it's nice and wispy, it's not runny. That is another really good reason why you should be wearing gloves when you are handling your salt bars because you just never really know if you have got that right time to cut. Um, you do need to cut them a lot sooner than a regular bar to make sure that your cutter will go through to make sure that it's not too crumbly. I'm sitting right on that very edge. It is almost at a point where it is going to be too crumbly to cut so I really need to get these ones cut now so I'm just kind of going to hope for the best that we don't have any sudden um, <laughs> melted soap but I am loving this one in fact I am loving this more than what I did the original one really really loving these colors now what I'm going to do when I put these out I don't often do this but I am going to put them back together the way it doesn't have to be the exact way that they're getting cut but what I want to do because this hasn't saponified I do want to make sure that this finishes its process so I want to keep it nice and warm so I'm just gonna let it sit and do its thing overnight and then tomorrow I'll be able to separate them out and then pop them onto the cure rack ready for curing never stamp my salt bars because they're just too hard so you can see that one there the white in there is still a little bit runny we won't touch it we'll just simply join those pieces up together and then overnight it should do its thing there is absolutely nothing wrong with it it would just simply be because there is no salt in that white bit but as I said I do want that sort of unsalted bit to provide that really beautiful lather that we're going to get from off of this bar. Alright so I am much happier with how this particular soap is coming up. I am loving the colours, um, much nicer design than my other one, loving the full size bar as well. Now if I do keep these, I want to actually keep these as a permanent sort of um, side of my luxury range, um, but i may even see if I can find maybe some individual cavities or see if my tall and skinny will give me a similar size bar as well because I think doing these in the slab mold are probably not such a good idea because I think when you actually look at the soap the edges of the soap have hardened a lot up a lot more than what the center has which makes sense because the center of the bar is a lot hotter is going to take longer to actually saponify and to set up and that sort of thing so i think probably doing your salt bars in a loaf mold is not the best idea but um that is just i wanted to get that number of bars so i might see if i can find some other options for myself i would also say that if you have got um your single bar cutter, I would not cut these on a multi bar cutter because that is too many strings to rewire. I will be honest now, I was cutting one of the sample pieces and my wires snapped on me again. But the reason that snapped on me is because the wire that I actually put in here was one that I had got with a cutter that was a 13 gauge, which is a really nice one that came with my log splitter and it produces a really nice cut on the low on the logs but for the salt bar I think you need at least a 17 or 18 gauge wire which is slightly thicker and um, will actually cut through this style of soap a lot better so just keep that in mind as well so you can see here that white which is near the edge of the soap that is all completely solid so I'm thinking that the white um, that's in those sort of middle loaves is because it is from the middle of the um, slab mold so I would probably if it is your first time doing a salt bar definitely use a um, individual silicon molds because it doesn't matter if you don't cut them at the right time because they will just pop out nice and easily so I am really really happy with this as I said I hope you have enjoyed watching how I made my salt bar and I hope you learned a thing or two from my mistakes. 
if you did why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below if you've got any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments section and until the next video comes out I hope you have a good one and I will see you then bye